Hello, everybody. My name is Stephen Feuerstein. I'm an Oracle developer advocate for PLSQL, and I'm here with a PLSQL brain teaser. Here's the tease. Can you figure out how to build a package whose specification and body both compile successfully? The specification contains at least two procedures, but you cannot actually execute any of those procedures. In other words, any attempt to call those procedures inside a PLSQL block leads to a compilation error. Not a runtime error, but a compilation error. Hmm, well that would be curious. Let's explore a little bit. So how would you get a compile error when you try to execute a procedure in a package that's valid? Well, let's see. Could you pass it the wrong type of data? Like you pass it a Boolean and it's looking for a date and Oracle can't implicitly convert them? Well, that would certainly cause an error but you can always change the type of data and pass it a date and get it to work, so that can't be it. What about passing the wrong number of arguments? You're looking for three arguments, but you passed 14. That'll certainly give you a compilation error. Okay, yeah, but you can change the number of arguments, so that can't be the tease. How about you implement overloadings, two or more programs with the same name, that are impossible for the compiler to distinguish between their two similar well, you might say, yeah, but then the package wouldn't compile, right? You wouldn't even get the package to compile if that were true. And the answer is, well, wrong O. Let's take a look. So first of all, what I'm going to do is turn on warnings. So the PLSQL warnings are a whole compile time warning subsystem built into the compiler that will give you feedback on the quality of your code. In other words, even if your code compiles, it might flag something as being problematic. And we'll see if that happens in this case. Now. I'm going to create a package called sales package. It has two procedures, both called calc total. Each take a single parameter named region n. And one takes car and one takes var car 2. Now, I try to compile this package and it says no problem. And then I try to compile the package body and it says no problem. So I have a valid package. And the question is, can I call either one of these programs? And it turns out the answer is no. Now you might say, well, why not? One's fixed length string, one's variable length string. They're different types, but notice that's the only difference. So they have the same name, they have the same parameter name, and they have a slightly different data type. So let's try to call calc total, pass it zone 15. I run this code and it gives me the 307 error. Too many declarations of calc total match this call. Why did that happen? Well, I passed it a string. Is it fixed length? Is it variable length? PLSQL can't really tell. They're too similar. It could be either one. An Oracle says, PLSQL runtime engine or compiler, sorry, says, nope, I don't know what you're talking about. Which one do you want me to call? All right, fine. How about if I put in the parameter name too? So I try to run my code. And I get the same error, 307. Too many declarations match this call. Why is that? Well, because both of my procedures have the same parameter name. Fine. So even if I specify the parameter name with name notation, it won't work. How about if I actually pass it a fixed length string? So where are you? Where are you? There you are. So now I'm going to declare a fixed length string, length two, assign it AB, and I'm going to pass that to my parameter. Now, surely the compiler would say, well, okay, now we're good because this is fixed length. One of them is variable length. One of them is fixed length. So that's going to work, right? And the answer is no, it's not going to work. You still get too many declarations of calc total match this call. Even though I specify this as a fixed length string, and I pass that to my parameter. Oracle does not consider those sufficiently different to allow that overloading to be successful. So that's the tricky thing to realize here. Now, if I had put in a date versus a string, then Oracle could tell the difference. But if I put in two different data types that are similar but not the same, the compiler says that's a valid package from the standpoint of compilation because it can tell the difference between these two. But when I try to call them, the it, PLSQL will be unable to distinguish between the two of them. And just to be clear, if I did use the same exact type, it would not allow me to compile. Too many declarations of calc total. Whoops, let's make sure of that. I try to compile this package. And I see 
305, previous use of calc total conflicts with this use. So at the time I try to create the package, if they're literally the same, then the compiler at this point says your package is invalid. But if the data type is even a little bit different, the compiler says, cool, that's good. And you only find out about the problem, which is that you have a program you can call until it's quote unquote too late, the package is defined and you try to use it. All right, so to sum up, Overloading is a great technique. You should use it whenever it's appropriate, but make sure that when you overload, you've got to distinguish, have clear distinction between the overloadings, number of parameters, data types of parameters, and with data types, they have to be different by family, not just different within the same family like car versus varcar2. Now, if you'd like to try this out for yourself, feel free to download my demo zip file, which has all of my PLSQL demo scripts in it from this URL and then just pull out the ambiguous overloading script. And then you can try it yourself, play around, and make sure you understand really clearly what the problem is and why PLSQL can be such a tease. Thanks for joining me, and look forward to my next PLSQL brain teaser.